Hello guys, welcome to another video of machine learning with Python and markers for LearnDataSizeQ.com So I think so far in this series we have covered supervised machine learning including linear regression, logistic regression, support vector machine for uh, regression and classification and also in the last tutorial we learned about k nearest neighbor and we have uh, provided different examples and we go through different concepts so I think uh, we should have a good understanding of what is machine learning and what are the supervised machine learning techniques that are available now and um, I think in coming tutorials I want to cover also on unsupervised machine learning so in compared to supervised machine learning unsupervised machine learning is not provided with a label data set so the machine will not be trained but instead you will ask the machine to identify some patterns and relationship for you uh, to give you some insightful information so which is very cool and uh, so in this coming tutorials I'm going to cover several examples for k-means clustering which is one of the most common clustering methods and without further ado let's look at how we can uh, get started and understand some concepts behind so I've prepared some uh, presentation slide for the purpose of understanding of everyone so I'm going to talk about what is clustering and uh, we're going to use k-means clustering which is uh, one of the most uh, popular clustering technique and we will check uh, we will find out how it works and then what will be the criteria for correct clustering and then how do we choose the factor k so don't be confused the k here with the k that we introduced in k nearest neighbor uh, even, even though they are both uh, uh, using k letter but then they are referring to uh, something different so if you want to find out uh, what the k is referring to in k nearest neighbor feel free to check out my last video and then uh, in this video I'm going, to I'm going to explain to you what the k is referring to so so what is clustering? Clustering is an unsupervised machine learning uh, technique and also mainly used for data segmentation that divides a huge data set into different groups on the basis of similarity in the data. So the resulting group uh, of the data will be known as clusters and K-mean clustering is a clustering technique that we are going to use in this tutorial uh, because it's one of the most common uh, clustering technique but it it's also one of the most uh, powerful clustering technique that are available out there. So one of the examples that I, I'm giving here is uh, you can see that uh, in this graph we have four clusters um, that are actually uh, segregated uh, based on the cost of the product and uh, the number of products that a customer is buying probably in a, a shopping mall. So uh, we will look at all the examples later to see how we can use different attributes uh, that are available in the data set to let the machine to decide uh, how the data points can be uh, segmented or divided into different clusters and so that when uh, we have a new unknown data points we can allocate the new data point in uh, one of the clusters and then from there we can uh, probably uh, predict the relationship or uh, the kind of a reaction or result that we will get from the unknown data point. So next uh, I want to show you how k-means actually works. Um, for simple explanations, um, k is referring to the number of clusters. Um, for k-means clustering, you have to tell the uh, machine that how many clusters that he has to look for. So and so we have to tell uh, k-means that hey you have to look for three clusters for example and then uh, what k-means will do is first he will look for uh, three uh, centroids uh, which also known as central gravity uh, randomly he will uh, from the data point he will pick three points out of for example 1000 points as the centroid and then the next step, he will actually create three clusters. Uh, for example, you can see we have a red, 
uh, blue and green cluster here and then it will assign um, the, those 1000 points uh, to uh, these three cluster based on the distance uh, to the centroid so the distance here can be calculated by Euclidean distance which uh, I have introduced in the last video in Canyon's neighbor so the concept here is the same and we are uh, the chemist clustering is using the Euclidean distance uh, to find out the distance from the centroid and then for example it's going to divide uh, 330 points to one cluster another 330 points to another cluster and the remaining to the last cluster uh, the number is not a, a compulsory number but uh, it depends on the distance uh, to the randomly assigned uh, initial uh, centroid so after uh, after that the next step will be uh, the k-means clustering algorithm is going to compute uh, or calculate the new centroid, the new central gravity based on the data points they assign to each cluster. And then from the calculation, we are going to get new clusters or probably uh, if you are lucky, the, the position of the uh, centroid uh, doesn't change. And therefore, we will come to the next step, which is the final step. If the centroid doesn't change, um, this um, this process will just stop but then if you are not lucky and the centroid is going to move uh, to another location and then the chemist clustering is just going to recalculate the centroid again based on the data point that is assigned to uh, the new centroid so let me repeat again so after the data points are assigned to the initial cluster it's going to calculate the uh, centroid again based on the data points that is assigned in that particular clusters and if the new clusters uh, centroid is at another location it's going to reassign the data points to that new cluster and then it's going to recalculate the new centroid location so the process keep on repeat repeat and repeat until the centroid stabilize and we will get our final clusters so it's uh, that simple and moving on um, so we actually have some criteria for a correct clustering and the terms that we are using here is called inertia um, you're going to see this term again when we look at uh, how we can determine number of clusters that we should be used or how to how can we determine the k number that we sh can, should be used in our algorithm so Inertia is also known as total sum of square so it is the weighted mean of the squares of the distance of each point from the center of gravity so total sum of square according to this huge formula uh, is equal to between cluster sum of square and within cluster sum of square so between cluster sum of square is also known uh, uh, nominated as uh, IR and then within cluster sum of square is uh, known as IA so we want the distance between all data points that is assigned to a cluster as small as possible and then we want the distance from one cluster to another cluster uh, which is the between cluster sum of square to be uh, as large as possible so if we have a small within cluster sum of square and then we have a large uh, uh, between cluster sum of square so let me repeat if we have a small within cluster sum of square and then we have a big uh, between cluster sum of square then we have a correct clustering and you just need to remember uh, we want the uh, IR to be as large as possible and then the IA to be as small as possible so um, the last slide that I'm going to show you is how do we choose k which is the number of cluster in this case I'm going to introduce to you the elbow method I'm also going to show you how you can use this elbow method uh, in your coding ladder and basically um, this elbow method is just to plot a graph in which you have a number of clusters uh, in um, your x-axis and then we also have uh, explained variations or explained variance in your y-axis 
So what this experiment variance is referring to is actually the discrepancy between a model data and, a, and the actual data. So uh, in other words, it is referring to uh, the variance that is uh, caused by the factors in your data set and that are actually present and it is not due to um, the error variance. So, uh, so the elbow method is trying to um, check for the variance uh, for each number of cluster uh, that you are specifying and then is trying to see uh, we are trying to see at which k we will get a stable uh, explained variance for example in this case um, at somewhere around 5 or 6 we get um, a stable uh, variance and therefore we are going to use for example k equal to 5 for our clustering method or clustering algorithm okay so enough of theory and then moving next i want to quickly show you how you can do a k-means clustering and then the data set that we are going to look at today is a customer spending data set and uh, this customer spending data set consists of um, several currents including customer id their gender age, uh, annual income, and spending score. So spending score is something that uh, we want to find out. Uh, for example, whether a certain age or certain gender or certain range of annual income is going to affect whether a person will spend more uh, in a shopping mall or is going to spend less in a shopping mall or not. So uh, there is no a true answer in this data set and therefore we want to give this to our machine to let it decide uh, what will be the uh, segmentation factor that is going to affect the spending cost spending score so i'm going to paste this link in the description just go ahead and download it and then save it in your folder and then we are going to load into our notebook so just go ahead to google collab and create a new notebook and then rename it to uh, whatever name you want and then the next step that we are going to do is to uh, import our libraries as usual so uh, no, I'm going to first import the file so um, upload it this is equal to file stop upload so go ahead and run this and then select the file you, that you have downloaded and then it's going to appear in the um, file icon here and then the next step that we want to do is to import the libraries that we want to use so uh, as usual we're going to import uh, python uh, pandas libraries numpy and then we want to use uh, matplotlib and seaborn for the visualization so i'm just going to paste all the libraries same as any other videos and the step number two will be to load our data into a data frame so that we can inspect it So I'm going to say df is for the pd dot read underscore csv. And then just go ahead and run this. And then the set number three will be to explore the data. So I'm going to say df dot head. Cool. So now we have our uh, data set being loaded in the data frame and then the next thing as usual we are going to explore further about this data so we can say df.describe and then we will get some statistical uh, calculation of this data including mean, max, standard deviation and so on and then we also probably want to look at uh, the, data type, the data types of each column df.info 
and then we can see that we have the gender in object data type so we will want to use the label encoder from scikit-learn to change it to uh, in numerical value so that uh, uh, our machine will be able to recognize the data so so for that I'm going to say from scikit-learn uh, import preprocessing and then as usual uh, we are going to create a new object data frame and then we are just going to select all the columns which are object data type to this data frame and then we can see uh, what we have uh, obtained into this object data frame so the next thing that we want to do is to uh, use the label encoder function and then for um, each column in this uh, actually we only have one column and then we're going to create a new column from this old column and then we rename it as uh, for example gender new and then we can look at the f dot head again cool so now we have a new column in which the male is represented in one and the female is represented in zero and uh, we want to drop on this uh, gender column because we don't need this because we already have our gender new column so we can say df dot drop and then gender and then one referring to column and then in place is equal to true and then df dot head cool so now we have our data ready and i think i want to stop here for this video and in the next video i'm going to show you how you can do some visualization and then we are going to uh, do the elbow method and also uh, finally we want to do the clustering and if you like my video feel free to click the like button and stay tuned uh, to my channel I will see you in the next video.